preview. So we're going to preview the group of five. And don't worry, we're not getting into like 65 teams. We're each picking a team that we like um, and telling you what to look out for. So Tyler, who's your team? Yeah, I kind of wanted to pick somebody from the Sun Belt. I think that the Sun Belt, uh, if you look at all the group of five conferences, uh, the, the Sun Belt just feels stacked. I think that, you know, Southern Miss is going to be better. Troy is probably the team to beat. You got South Alabama in there. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Roadrunners of UTSA just because Conference USA, right, if you look from me. If you looked at that conference, that conference is freaking garbage. I mean, the Conference USA feels like the next conference uh, to be gone. There's going to be some teams uh, in the next coming years that are going to be moving on to the American and the American. It's going to turn into the next uh, mega conference. Uh, But really the only negative that I see on UTSA schedule is some of the opponents they got to face. They got to go on the road to Houston, on the road to Tennessee, and on the road to Tulane. I I I I probably see one and two in there. Uh, they probably beat Houston. I'm just not really buying Houston. I They probably lose to Tennessee. They probably lose to Tulane, but I could see an upset there. That's probably going to be like the first one to 60, it feels like, with those two offenses. Uh, but yeah. I think that the the conference USA is going to be UTSA's uh, to lose. I think that they either finish 11-1 and one and 10-2. and two If an uh, experienced quarterback with Frank Harris, uh, can, they've just been really consistent the past couple of years. You know, their head coach uh, has done a phenomenal job. Uh, their defense – also does well too. Uh, so I, it feels like it's going to be between Tulane and UTSA. And whenever those two teams uh, meet up, the winner of that could definitely uh, be in the New Year's Six Bowl discussion again. Yeah. So I see, I like that. I like that. I mean, mine is Tulane. I'll go ahead and get into it because I see Wade ferociously <laughs> typing, trying to find his team. The brains, the <laughs> wheels in the, in the brain are clicking. Um, I like Tulane. I like him at number 24 to start the season. I think they probably don't move much from that. They got old not, to start. Yeah, I'm not buying the hype that Twitter accounts like Big Game Boomer are saying that Tulane will be the number one team in the state of Louisiana. Are you high? Like, come on. Watch man. out for South Alabama week one, Tulane. Yeah, I mean, you got – you said they play Ole Miss. Um, yep. They at take home, on though. South Alabama. They play Southern Miss in Hattiesburg. So, I'm not saying they're going undefeated, but I'm saying they're – group of five team that'll finish in the top 25 i think michael pratt uh he had a great year last year 27 touchdowns 10 on the on the ground he's coming back he's got unfinished business he wants to really vault himself up in the uh stratosphere of quarterbacks because you got a pretty loaded draft class he has to come back for a good season of course they lost their starting running back um who was kind of their playmaker all year they lost a few guys on defense but I could see him bouncing back. There's got to be some losses in there. I'm not predicting undefeated, 11 and one, blah blah blah. But I'm predicting a reasonable nine and three. That that's what I'm going with. I've, if I'm Tulane, that's a success. Wade, did you found one yet? Right. I wasn't frantically finding my team. I was frantically finding y'all facts to to back my team and making okay. sure they didn't go like three and eight last year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see it. All right, so. I'm going to go with one of the newer FBS teams in James Madison University. They uh, acclimated quite well to um, big boy football last year, going eight and three. They were flirting with an undefeated season until they ran into a tough three-game stretch last year, losing to Marshall, Louisville, and um, I think Old Dominion. Um, But nonetheless, this year they uh, come back. Um, with a lot of their starters, and they have one of the easiest schedules I've seen. Uh, they're playing an in state game against Virginia, they'll probably be favored in that game. Virginia is one of the worst power five teams, yeah. I think I predicted them to get two, they're gonna finish dead last in that conference. I think they could easily take that, and then they get South Alabama, who you mentioned being a Sun Belt uh favorite, they get them at home. And then they also get a home game um, against Appalachian State and Georgia Southern, who have been pretty good as well. Uh, they will know if this team's legit when they play Troy on the road in week number four. I think if they can hang tight in that one or even pull off the upset, uh, this team could go undefeated. Oh, undefeated. Okay. okay. Well, watch James out for James Madison to the playoff. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm hearing. James yeah. Madison, James to, the Madison to the Orange Bowl. How do you deny it? An undefeated group. Uh, no, I think that if UTSA runs the table, I could see them getting. Well, they would have a win over Tennessee. Yeah, they would have. James a win Madison over would have a win over Virginia. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they're probably not getting it. No, you would have to have a Cincinnati type schedule to get in. You know, be like a Notre Dame. 
have that win. I think that if UTSA beats Tennessee, they're right up there. But next yeah, they, year, they, got a top they would be allowed. They would be in with an automatic bid. Yeah, that is true. That I I agree. The you know with the team with the conferences going away from the divisions, and then it's just really the best two that play at the end of the season. Automatic bid is in. That's the way you got to do it. 